Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And if you listen to this, that's me on my bed. It sounds a lot springier for some reason. <sighs> I'm actually recording this at a much a different time of the day to what I normally do it. I normally record them these uh, sessions shortly after I wake up it might seem like a weird time to be making sleep sessions but I find that I've got a bit a bit more energy <sighs> I don't yield quite as much when I first wake up So it's, I don't know what time it is, about 11 o'clock or something in the evening. The, the windows are open. The light seems to be, the light in the room rather, seems to be a lot brighter than normal. I guess I wouldn't have it on normally in the morning because it doesn't, it's not needed. And... It feels quite peaceful. I've had to put Andre into his cage because otherwise he'll be scratching at the door. But I told him they'd just be in there for half an hour or so and I'd let him out again. Um, so hopefully he's okay. Please remember to only listen or watch these sessions when you can safely close your eyes as this let me bore you to sleep may cause boredom. Someone uh, posted a comment on my YouTube channel and uh, If you wanted to visit my YouTube channel, it's Jason Newland's Sleep Hypnosis. That's the name of the channel. There's someone posted a comment on one of these sessions saying um, that he was bored to sleep within 10 minutes or something, or 5 minutes. So I re commented, replied back, and said, Sorry it took so long to bore you. I was very pleased with my quick witted comment ish but it's nice to know that you know, I've got people that support me you know that on YouTube and people on SoundCloud I don't ever really hear anything from the people on SoundCloud I don't really get much in the way of comments from the podcasts even though thousands are, are downloaded and played every week I just know nobody really leaves a comment unless, unless everybody hates the sessions but yeah no one never had really had much in the way of comments on that had comments on the YouTube channel comments on Facebook comments on my website stuff like that but After, you know, with SoundCloud, that channel, that podcast, after 150,000 plus plays, I thought I would have had a, at least one comment, but nothing. So if you are what, listening rather on SoundCloud, or on iTunes, or Podomatic, or Podbean, or Spreaker or oh, I'm losing track so many different ones then maybe you can leave a comment 
and say hello just to let me know you're there it's like I know you're there but at the same time I don't know you're there it's uh I guess it's, it'd be like being on stage, but I'm facing with my back to the audience. I know they can hear me, but they're being very quiet. And I wonder, are they still there? How many people are there? And I'm assured that it's a, a full audience. But I'm talking and I've got headphones on or earplugs so I can't hear the audience. I guess this is nothing like that but I'm trying to think of a, an analogy. Some kind of connection. So for those that... If this is your first... Oh, excuse me, if this is your first time listening to me doing these let me bore you to sleep all it is is just me talking sometimes I'll talk about absolutely nothing sometimes I'll talk about absolutely nothing and maybe have a little break and talk about something now and then throughout like interweave it I like the odd I like a bit like sweet corn in a big pile of poo you know that's a nice analogy so other times I might talk about my life other times and I say other times other days because these seem to be turning into a little daily adventure which has surprised me because I didn't have that intention when I started them I started with the full intention of just doing a few sessions and then I guess moving on to the next thing is what I normally do I think the biggest daily course I ever did was 34 days which is a daily relaxation hypnosis course for anxiety stress and stuff and I did them last year I think near the beginning of last year and they were some of them were quite long but 34 days was kind of as many as I could do and I just I'd had enough it was uh, but I did over a month every day for a month at the same time as that I was also doing a weekly pain relief session and a weekly sleep session so I was kind of piling it on quite a lot of uh, work on me but for some reason these maybe it's the unstructured structuredness of these recordings that appeal to me because I really can just say anything I want to say and I can just be my normal in fact I can just actually try and be exciting and at the same time also be boring because that's my superpower the ability to bore people so instead of instead of beating myself up about it instead of criticizing myself I've embraced it and I'm using that that boring personality to, to help others 
to sleep. Because let's face it, if you was in a room with me right now and I was just talking at you, which is what I would do, I don't even like to talk with people, I like to talk at them. And the only things I want to discuss are things that interest me and the only subject matter that I really like talking about is myself. So it makes me the ideal candidate to make recordings like this because I can just talk at you and if you were in the room with me I would see your eyes glaze over because I've moved on from talking at people with complete um, oblivion to it you know I'm actually very aware of my tendency or what my need to talk at people and I'm very aware that I'm only interested in myself sometimes I'm not even interested in that And that's the thing, I might have said this before, but I'll help people if I can. You know the old saying, people take weakness, um, kindness for weakness. Some people, you hear some people say that, oh, you know, they're taking kindness for weakness. With me, people take kindness for interest. because I'm being kind they think that I'm interested sometimes and generally I'm not and it's not because I don't want to be I'd love to be this isn't how I want to be trust me I'd life would be so much easier if I could I don't know have an interest in other people's lives but I generally don't have that I don't think about other people when they're not with me I don't give them that much attention when they're with me but I don't I don't, I don't worry about people and it's not because a lack of caring because I do care kind of I just you know don't have that interest for the okay I'll give you an idea I like cornflakes and I think of people the same way as I think of a box of cornflakes bear with me while I explain this box of cornflakes I just open the packet up and pour some of them into a bowl add milk sugar whatever I want to milk add to it and eat it and it's done I have no interest in the production of the cornflakes I'm not interested in how they're produced, where the corn was grown, uh, where the box was made, how it was processed, what people worked on the product, how it got delivered from the warehouse to the supermarket. I really, I mean, that's the life of the of the box of cornflakes, and I'm not just not that interested. But I do care that they taste nice do care that they're crispy and crunchy and have the right texture and sound nice when I crunch them and eat them I 
again probably not the best analogy comparing human relationships with breakfast cereal <laughs> maybe so that's what these sessions are about and I seem to be developing some kind of a lisp a little bit of a lisp and I, I don't really know why because see it's, maybe it's just the way I'm talking maybe my my way of talking has changed maybe I've got lazier I'm not pronouncing my words correctly or as well as perhaps I used to I see you know it's not like I've got any major dental issues or missing teeth that I used to have you know if I suddenly had a gap at the front of my teeth um, it might affect my speech or if I had an injury some kind of gum issue or lip problem but maybe it's the beard maybe the beard's so heavy that it's dragging my jaw down and I'm struggling to keep my mouth together I look like a fly catcher or someone that's just constantly surprised so I'd like to you to focus on how you feel and remember the, one of the things that it's not just one of the things it's kind of the thing the the secret ingredient to these sessions is if you can put up with me waffling on the more sessions you listen to the more you find yourself really getting tired and regardless of how tired you feel now when it comes to your time to go to bed to go to sleep the second your head touches your pillow something happens there's a real natural response your body becomes more relaxed your mind slows down and becomes more relaxed you have more of a sense of well-being a calmness regardless of what's going on outside if there's any you know sounds of wind or rain or any other kind of weather because none of that stuff really matters when you're feeling sleepy and calm and you can enjoy that feeling without any kind of pressure to sleep or to stay awake no pressure to do anything that point where you just don't care it doesn't matter because you know you remember that you were born with the ability to sleep deeply and easily we were all born with that of course we can't do all the things that we used to do when we were babies blowing snot, bu snot bubbles I've tried to do that but it's difficult but babies can get do it they're really good at that 
who in your pants you can't really get away with that until you get much older maybe but sleeping it's, it's an inbuilt thing that takes no effort in fact effort is the opposite in order for you to try and sleep if you try and force yourself to sleep is the same as someone ringing a bell you know those really loud bells right in your ear saying sleep go to sleep go to sleep it's not going to work can't be forced personally I don't think anything should be forced especially things like farts don't force a fart ever I don't even run for bu for buses not that there's necessarily a, a connection between forcing farts and running for buses but I don't find it that important. If a fart's ready to surprise and delight you and your friends and family, then great. But if it's not ready yet, if it's not fully formed, No fun in a premature fart. I'm thinking that should be maybe the title of my autobiography. There's no fun in a premature fart. Falling asleep. It's just allowing your brain and your mind to just do what comes naturally. Because if you're lying there thinking, oh, I've got to go to sleep, I want to go to sleep. Uh, and you're trying to force yourself and you're moaning at yourself and any of that kind of stuff that would be the same as trying to walk a tight tightrope and thinking you know please don't t fall please don't fall please don't fall or juggling, please don't drop a ball, please don't drop an egg, please don't drop a coconut. That's if you're using lots of different things. That'd be of no use. I mean, if you was on a bus, you wouldn't want the bus driver to think the bus driver's saying to themselves, oh, please don't crash, please don't crash, please don't crash. That would be, especially if they said it out loud. I'd, I'd probably want to get off the bus. Well, I'd, say I'd wait until the next stop because I wouldn't want him to crash. But, you know. Can't force it. You can try, but it doesn't work. Sleeping is the most natural thing in the world. We're born to do it. See, I live with a ferret. Don't worry, this is connected with what I'm talking about. I'm not going off just randomly. I wonder who's talked about 
premature farts, bus drivers who don't want to crash. Now he's talking about ferrets. No, it's okay. It's uh, the reason I'm talking about Andre is because he is never more than five seconds from being fully asleep. He can fall asleep instantly. And I've actually watched him when he's tired, trying to stay awake. Maybe he's in his cage and he doesn't want to be in the cage, he wants to be out with, you know, outside, being naughty or whatever. And he's lying in his hammock, he's holding his head up, looking at me. And I watch him as his eyes start to close and his head starts to fall down. Not, I don't mean like roll away, obviously it's connected to him. But his, you know, his head just goes floppy, and his neck goes floppy. And it just reminds me of the time when I was at Butlins, and I, I'd had a particularly late night the night before, and the next day we well me and loads of other people had to attend this lecture on I think it might be in health and safety and all kinds of stuff but it lasted for a few hours and the more I tried to force my eyes to stay open the more my eyes were closing So it's like trying to force something triggered the opposite to happen. It's an interesting concept really. I think we're possibly all being in that situation when you're really, really tired and you're trying to keep everything together and you're trying to stay alert and awake and the more you do that the tireder you get which is why I always say at the beginning of these sessions only listen or watch when you can safely close your eyes so if you're um If you're in the space station or something at the moment, controlling it, and maybe don't listen to this until some of the other astronauts are awake. I don't live too far away from a, a railway track. It's not like a walking distance as in, you know, I couldn't just skip there. You know, I couldn't run there in my slippers and dressing gown and without anyone seeing me. Um, unless it was, I suppose, late at night when all the lights are off. But then why would I do that anyway? But it's, it's a walk, but it's close enough for me to hear the trains. And during the day, don't notice it that much, although there's, there are more trains during the day, I imagine, than during the night. There's also uh, the, the railways, they use it for transporting, uh, I guess, cargo and things like that, you know, between the, the docks from around the country. And the late night trains, 
the ones at two, three in the morning, they bit their horn. You know the do do. Oh, that, that was my impression of a train horn. I might have been able to make it sound a bit better, but a bit more realistic, a bit more in tune. But the thing is. I don't think it fits in with the the relaxed kind of vibe of the session if I start suddenly yelling out an impression of a train honking its horn honking its horn that's a funny term isn't it why'd you get sacked I was honking me horn, I got caught. So yeah, everything's okay. I've been the reason I didn't do this this morning is because I was helping someone out. So I was busy. I mean I've been really, really working on my website. JasonNewland.com one dot JasonNewland.com not JasonNewland.com one I say one as in the one at that particular website not one as in the number and it's coming ac- coming together quite nice it's very uh quite complex what I'm doing very intricate it's like it's a bit like trying to do a life size can you hear the train how noisy it is out there it's quite loud more so than normal unless that's a plane I'm not sure it's some kind of transport made of metal I forget what I was going to say there oh the intricateness of what I'm doing on the website is it's just very not tedious so much but time consuming and I have to try and stay focused on it make sure that I don't miss anything out and Everything I do needs to be rechecked and rechecked by me. It's just continuous. But I'm quite pleased with how it's going. I just found out that most of my podcasts are now on Spotify. I didn't even realise it until today. I knew that one was, but most of them are. I also realised that the Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcast, which is on Podbean, I've not shared that with many other of the podcasts other than iTunes and Spreaker, I think. Which means I need to share that and also so with quite a few other podcast hosts so it's all kind of going quite nicely there's still a fair bit of work to do it's, sometimes it's I find it difficult to know which which bit to focus on the most what needs my attention is it the website? Is it the podcasts? Is it the YouTube video channels? 
which I still had work to do on them um, yeah so there's still a fair bit to do I'm quite pleased with how it is going at the moment to convey for a walk today he had me going all around the place He loves exploring. It really, that's his playtime. Running around after balls and, uh, you know, playing with toys in there at home isn't really what he wants to do anymore. He wants to go outside. That's the thing that he wants more than anything, is to go out. So I think as the summer starts to arrive, I'll maybe try and get into some kind of routine where I take him out maybe twice a day instead of once. He just absolutely loves being outside. It seems to be his favourite thing. Other than wiping his ass on my carpet. That seems to be his... Or waking me up by biting my toes. You know. There are a few of his favourite things. Turn into Mary Poppins here. Is it Mary Poppins? I sung that. Here's a few of my favourite things. Pooing on a bathroom floor. Biting daddy's feet. Trying to eat daddy's food off his plate. And all he's done is gone back into the kitchen to get something. Yeah. A few of his favourite things. Steal my slippers and ruin them, ruining them. Irreparably ruining my slippers. That's one of his favourite things. But going out, regardless of the weather, he doesn't care because if it's if it's too cold, he knows he can climb inside my jacket. If he gets too wet, he climbs all over me and dries himself off on me. If he gets tired, I carry him for a short while and then he goes back down on the floor or if he gets really tired he climbs into my jacket so he's got it he's got it good always he's got all angles covered I'm like a human taxi human rickshaw I don't know so oh, I have something to eat now I think I treat myself to a Maybe a bit of ice cream later on. <sighs> this 
this is another uneventful recording from the podcast called Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. You can Google me if you want to find out all my different stuff that I do. Or go to my website, jasonnewland.com. Go to Podbean, which is where the main podcast is. I'm also on iTunes as well. This podcast is. So, take care. And... I could so easily go to sleep right now. I did record a session once where I fell asleep. I just started snoring. (laughs) Anyway, I'm going to go. You take care. See you tomorrow.